Hey everybody, we're back with more John Dickerson, the author of The Hardest Job in the World, The American Presidency. Let's talk about the 2020 campaign. You, you've said in conversations that we've had actually that you, you come up with a theory for the year, like a theory for this campaign. What's your theory for 2020? Do you have one yet? Well, you know, the, 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 I think one of the theories is the theory that, that the book was founded on, which is when you go back and look at what the job is at its most basic form, what the presidency is, is a big job where high stakes things happen that are a surprise that you need to be ready for and that you need to prioritize for the right way, build a team for the right way. So that was what I was focused on before any of the three crises happened, which all happened after I wrote the book. Now that we're living through COVID, the, the racial strife we see in our streets every day, and, and also the economic devastation, those three will necessarily crowd out a lot. But what is the main question then? I think the question comes out of what um, this expression, build back better, which is the goal for America and the goal for America's presidents is not just to kind of get back to it, the level playing field. What we've seen in a lot of these challenges recently is they've exposed a lot of the inequities in, in our system and a lot of what has cracks in it. And somebody who can lift America to a higher vision, because why do you do that? So that everybody gets motivated to do, to do better, not just to get back to normal, but to create an America that is in concert with its values. And keeping the conversation on that and not letting it get sidetracked, that would be, I think, probably where I would land at the moment in terms of the one central thing about the election. As presidents rarely give back powers, um, do you think presidents will take certain aspects out of their toolkit? For instance, Donald Trump has proven that unlike our conception of ourselves and our government, demagoguery is actually a useful tool for a president, uh, at least for the goals that Donald Trump has, which is power through division. Do you, do you think that decorum will return, I guess, is my answer, as the standard when we've seen proof that barbarism works as well? Well, that will be one of the, you asked about questions of this election. That will be one of them. It's, it's basically uh, Joe Biden's pitch, which is if, if we think of elections as responses to the previous president, um, then one of the arguments that Biden is making is return the country to values and character and things that were, and honesty, which are at the, if you think of the two pillars of the presidency, um, you think about honesty, you know, honest Abe, one of the greatest presidents and character. And I think that's essentially the Biden campaign's pitch, uh, which is essentially going back to those basic values that were at the center of the office and, um, and the comfort of not having to be in a state of jitteriness. The presidency usually is a calming job. Uh, that certainly was its original conception, which is when, when the country is agitated, the president calms things. Um, president Trump has seen advantage in keeping things jittery, keeping things uh, a kilter. Um as a, a student of history, uh, I want to talk to you about the call to take down Confederate monuments and, say, the renaming of army bases after people like, you know, uh, General Bragg. Do you perceive that as an erasure of history? What do you think of that argument? Nobody's going to forget the Civil War. <laughs> so, no, it's, it's not an erasure of history. And also, the monuments are not, it's not erasing history. It's what we elevate. And there was a striking moment, President uh, Trump spoke at West Point and he said, I'm here on behalf of the whole nation. And he talked to those cadets who were graduating. And he said, you are a part of the lineage that, that and these are the president's words, that ended the evil of slavery. Now he wasn't talking about the Union generals and the Confederate generals, both of whom graduated from West Point. He was talking just about the Union generals. So if he lifts up the Union generals who ended the evil of slavery as a way to give a moral push to those cadets leaving West Point, what message then does it send to elevate those generals who were working on behalf of keeping the evil of slavery? And that's what those statues do. They elevate the idea of keeping the evil of slavery. And that's by the logic of the president's speech at West Point. That logic has to be consistent in a country that is based on the idea of equality. Well, um, it's the hardest job in the world. Is it, um, is it a broken job? 
I, I think it is. I think it is broken for this reason. We've asked the president to do more than ever before. Things have gotten more complex too. The economy is more complex. Requires a presidential response. And we've also tied the president's hands in a number of ways. Congress doesn't do the role it used to do, which puts more items on the presidential to-do list. Partisanship, which can be quite useful in battling out ideas, has locked us up and is not useful. Social media and the way we talk in the public square has gotten more jagged and people of bad faith have grabbed control of the, of the debate. And we also don't allow the president to kind of come into the job with the kind of preparation you would hope to have when you're taking over a multi-trillion dollar operation. Those things need to be fixed and the, the campaign is a great place to have those discussions about what needs to be fixed and changed. It can be changed. Fortunately, problems in America have been changed in the past, but we need to realign our expectations and make the job we talk about closer to the job as it actually is. Well, it's the hardest job in the world, but it's really a delightful book. The man is John Dickerson. Thanks for being here, John. Good oh, to see great. you. It's great to be with you, Stephen. Thank you. We'll be right back with a performance by Black Pumas. Black Pumas.